So welcome to this video on Azure Traffic Manager. And this is a service that's designed to handle when we have multiple instances of some Azure hosted service, maybe in different regions. For example, I can think about maybe I have a cloud service in the US, a cloud service in Europe, and I have a cloud service in Asia. So I have three different cloud services spread over the Windows Azure data centers, the regions they have services at. And in each of these, I have some kind of web-based service. This could be a PaaS web role. This could be an IaaS virtual machine that's running IIS or some other web service. It could be an Azure website. So in all of these, I have some web service and it's the same service I just have it geographically distributed and my goal is that basically I have some user and that user is at their computer and depending on where they are I want them to use the one closest to them so if I'm in the US for example I want to go to the instance of this web service hosted in the US if I was in Europe, I want to use the one in Europe, Asia, Asia. Also, only if they're available. So maybe I'm in the US, but the US instance isn't available right now. So send me to the next closest one. And this is what Azure Traffic Manager does. So Azure Traffic Manager is this additional service. So we have Azure Traffic Manager. And this is effectively like a DNS service. And what it lets me do is create profiles. So I create a name, and this name is globally unique in the Azure Traffic Manager namespace. So maybe this is, for example, Savtech Web App One dot Traffic Manager dot net. So it's, in that, it's always trafficmanager.net namespace. And what this profile allows me to do in Azure Traffic Manager is it actually has endpoints defined. So it says it redirects to. So for example, this would redirect to the US version, the Europe version, and the Asia version. And I have different load balancing options available on how this exactly works, and I'll cover those in a minute. But let's take the default performance one. That's what 70% of people use. And the idea of the performance one is it wants to redirect me to the closest service available. And the way it does this is when I, on my client, want to find www.savletech.com, whatever, my request goes to my local DNS server. That's what's configured in my IP config. So I make that request to that local DNS server. Now at this point, I don't really want to give out savtechwebapp1.trafficmanager.net. I don't want to make that publicly available. So I probably have some corporate site. So for example, I maybe own savtech.net. And I have the authoritative DNS servers for that zone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an alias in that authoritative zone. So maybe I just call that web app. Dot So that's an alias, a C name record. And what that means is this alias record actually points to the traffic manager name. So what that enables me to do is on my web browser on the client, I type web app.savletech.net. That goes to my local DNS server who then goes and looks up through recursive queries, finds the savletech.net authoritative DNS server, finds web app, returns the result to my local DNS server, which is actually an alias to savtechwebapp1.trafficmanager.net. Now I'm hitting the traffic manager service. So now my local DNS server goes and talks to the traffic manager DNS services. So it, it kind of bounces back and forth. At this point, the traffic manager service looks at where is my local DNS server. So it's checking where is this located? And more importantly, what are the latencies between this local DNS server and the different Azure regions? It has kind of a DNS latency map. 
and it builds this up over time. So what it's going to do is it's going to work out, hey, based on the local DNS server that made this request, I see that DNS server from a latency perspective is closer to the US Azure region. So this is going to return the record that points to the US service. So that's what Traffic Manager is doing. It's basically looking at the local DNS server that's making the request and redirects me to whichever service is the closest to me. Now, the way this actually works is, is it's only going to redirect ones that are available. So every 30 seconds, the traffic manager service is trying to contact each of these services. And I tell it, is it HTTP? Is it HTTPS? Is it a custom port? Is it a certain page within that website? So I give you that information. After four failed attempts, so two minutes, it will then put it into unavailable and it won't redirect people there anymore. If it becomes, it's going to keep trying every 30 seconds. When it's available again, it will start redirecting people there. So it's making sure it redirects me to the one that's closest to me and that is actually available. Additionally, this record here has a time to live, like all DNS. And by default, it's pretty short. It's five minutes, 300 seconds. So that means that I'm going to cache that record for a period of time. So if this site, let's say, did disappear, well, then there's two minutes to realize it's gone. And then this time to live in a worst case before I get redirected to another one. So I may want to reduce the five minutes to maybe 30 seconds. There's a cost impact to that because I pay for the request to this traffic manager alias, this name. So I have to kind of balance how important is it I get people switched over as quick as possible compared to the cost of those requests. So then I can control that, I can figure that. And I talked about performance load balancing. So performance is it looks at where is the local DNS server compared to all of the Azure regions. I can also do round robin. It just rotates between those available and returns those responses. I can do failover. I put these things in order. So they always go to the US first. If US is unavailable, it goes to Europe. If Europe is unavailable, it goes to Asia. I can control that configuration. But at a high level, just think of Traffic Manager as giving me an alternate DNS name that I can hide with a vanity domain that's an alias to it. And this Azure Traffic Manager profile can point to different cloud services I have running in Azure and direct clients to either the version closest to them based on availability or that round robin or that failover configuration. So it's really whatever you want it to do, but it's giving you that sort of geo awareness to redirect. Key point though, is it's based on the location of the DNS server, not the client. Now normally the client and the DNS server will be in the same place, but if I was using like a geo DNS service, then it's not gonna work. If I'm using a global DNS, then it's gonna base where it sends me based on the DNS server's locale, not my client. So just be aware, this is how this is working. It's not based on the client's location, it's based on the local DNS server making the request. That's a high level overview Let's actually go and see this in the lab. So in this lab, there's three cloud services for this demonstration. There's one in East Asia, one in the East US, and one in North Europe. And each of these have a single virtual machine that's running the basic IIS web server. If I connect to each of them, I can see that the one in North Europe, I added the word Europe to the basic IIS page. For the one in the US, I added US and the one in Asia says Asia. And each of them are currently looking at their own address and you can see it, it's showing the right um, text. Didn't mean to do that. So that's those three cloud services and each of those cloud services has an endpoint for port 80 which points to each of the virtual machines in that specific cloud service, kind of like the diagram I drew earlier. If I go to my traffic manager, I have a single profile configured for the Savtech web app one. If I select that, I can see an overview of how much it's been used, which really not a lot, but I can see the endpoints. So I configure as the endpoints, the cloud services that it's going to point to. So it's pointing to my East Asia, North Europe and East US cloud services. In the configuration, I tell that profile, what is the DNS name of this traffic manager service? So this piece, that first prefix, has to be unique across all of the traffic manager namespace. 
But remember, we're not gonna see this anyway. I've configured a time to live for the DNS record, only 30 seconds, so it's fairly frequent, but I'm not gonna use this a lot, so I'm not worried about the cost of the requests. I'm using the performance load balancing method, so it's gonna point users to the one that's closest to them. And then to check if those endpoints are available, I'm using basic HTTP on port 80 and just the base URL. Now, if this was a production application and the application had a certain URL or certain app, I would actually type in the path and file name of the application because it's not use, it just checking is the website available. It's more useful if I'm actually checking the specific application that's running. So that's the profile configured. Once I've done that, I, I can now just go and check that URL. So if I actually jump over and copy that, and for example, if I jump to my URL, my virtual machine in Europe, and I paste it in that traffic manager URL, it actually points me to the one in Europe, which is what I would expect. If I go and type that same URL on my one in the US, it redirects me to the one in US, and the one in Asia, the one in Asia, I would hope would point me to the one in Asia, which is a bit slower, but it does, because obviously I'm actually on the virtual machine in Asia and it knows which one to direct me to. So based on the local DNS server of my VM in Asia, it's saying, hey, you're closest to the Asia Azure data centers. So that's working with just that basic traffic manager URL. But I don't want to expose that directly. So what I actually do is on my DNS server for my savvletech.net domain, I've created an alias record called webapp. So webapp.savvletech.net actually resolve to savvtechwebapp1.trafficmanager.net, that traffic manager name. So now I can test that. So I jump to my web browser and I actually use that name. So this is a box that's actually based in the US. You can see it points to the one in the US. So that's just the basic operation that's using that vanity domain, the savvletech.net, as an alias, which then points to that traffic manager. Again, I could change that configuration. I could do the load balancing. I could do the round robin. And what I'll actually do next is I'll actually shut down that US virtual machine. So I'm just going to shut down that virtual machine. This will take a little bit of time. And what I'll see is I'll check back in a second. I should actually see the traffic manager for that endpoint will start to detect there's a problem. So here I can see it's been degraded, but it's not unavailable yet. But it's seen it's already missed at least one of those 30 second checks. After four of them, it will then actually change to not being available anymore. So I'll keep waiting. So now I can see that US one is actually now stopped. So if I go back to my website and I do a control refresh so it's actually not using its own local cache. Okay, so this time it's found now Europe because US is unavailable, so it's put me to Europe instead. If I now started that US one again, once it detects it's available, it would add it back. So that's a high level overview of Traffic Manager, how it's doing that redirection. And uh, I hope that was useful. Appreciate your time. Thank you.